Hello, I'm Dr. Brandon Blue, an assistant member of the Malignant Hematology Department at Moffitt Cancer Center. Multiple myeloma unfortunately disproportionately affects African-American and Hispanic patients. That's my community, and that's why I'm personally really interested in trying to make sure that we improve the disparities for all patients with multiple myeloma. We're here to discuss disparities across multiple myeloma patient journey with Gary, a multiple myeloma patient and survivor. Hi, I'm Gary Lambert. I was diagnosed with stage 3 multiple myeloma in 2014, and I've been living with myeloma for 10 years. Now, before we get into it, I want to say that I look forward to answering your questions on disparities in caring for multiple myeloma and hearing your perspective as a multiple myeloma patient and survivor. Dr. Blue, how does myeloma affect people of different races and ethnic groups? Well, I'll tell you that Black and Hispanic Americans are unfortunately more likely to be diagnosed than white Americans with multiple myeloma. And also we see that African Americans and Hispanics are diagnosed four to five years younger. And why is early diagnosis so important? You know, I'll tell you that the delays in the diagnosis can really lead to increases in complications. So what happens is, is that before people even start therapy, they can have a lot of problems with multiple myeloma. Some of those signs and symptoms can be really confused for other conditions, such as diabetes, kidney disease, and even arthritis. It's an even bigger problem in black patients who really tend to have more of those illnesses, and so it leads to delaying the diagnosis of multiple myeloma. What myeloma symptoms should clinicians take notice of? Well, according to the International Myeloma Foundation, it could be things like chronic bone pain, back pain, fatigue, or really some of the early signs of multiple myeloma. But there could be other things that are really more important, such as elevated calcium, renal impairment, anemia, or even bone damage, which when we put them all together is what we call the CRAB criteria. Sometimes people can actually get nerve damage, repeated infections, or even bruising or bleeding. Those things can also happen. Once symptoms are identified, what are the next steps for a diagnosis? When you go to see your clinician, they may order something called a CBC, or a complete blood count. Also, they may do what they call a complete metabolic panel, quantitative immunoglobulins, or even do certain imaging to really look for those sites of bone pain to try to figure out exactly what might be happening there. Unfortunately, sometimes we may need to refer you to a specialist known as a hematologist or oncologist. And then from there, we may need to do even more testing to really confirm not only the diagnosis, but the stage of the disease. I was experiencing severe back pain and my primary care physician sent me to physical therapy. It was several months before additional x-rays showed lesions in my spine. And then I was referred to a hemoc for diagnosis and treatment. Can you explain why it's so important for patients to be seen by a specialist and how the referral process should work in an ideal world? I'll tell you that most patients are really initially diagnosed with myeloma, they go to their primary care doctor first. On average, patients see their primary care physician three times before getting referral to a hematologist, which unfortunately can lead to a delay in diagnosis of over six months. I'll tell you one of the things that I think is really important is that there's a strong relationship with the primary care and the hematologist and oncologist. Once you identify someone who may be at risk, I think it's important to get that person in early to confirm the diagnosis, but also get them in early so we can have them having early access to treatment. Is there anything else you want to say to advise clinicians? To sum up, it is important for primary care physicians to use resources like the International Myeloma Foundation's tip card to familiarize themselves with potential signs and symptoms of myeloma and strongly consider a myeloma workup in Black and Hispanic patients, and to build a strong referral network and consider early referral for patients that they think may have a precursor to myeloma known as MGUS. Thanks so much, Gary. It's been great speaking with you. Thank you, Dr. Blue.